I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. I'm going to use a thrifted milk can or some sort of a vessel. It doesn't have the handles on the side, but you know. You can certainly do this with a bucket, and you can do it with something that you find at a thrift store, at a garage sale, whatever. This is from my wall sticker set that came from Dollar Tree, and so is the sunflower. It's the other half of the set that we just used. And I'm going to place it down on this can. I'm just deciding what length I want, how tall I want the flower to go up, if I want some greenery on it. Main thing is the flower. You can put Mod Podge on here first if you would like to make sure that it sticks down. Especially if you have a real shiny surface because these wall adhesives are intended to come off. So, you know, they will kind of lift up if you don't seal them in. So you'd want to put something down on the shiny can or put some chalk paint on it. Put down your flower and then seal over the top of it if you want it to be permanent. Okay, so, but I'm not doing that because you know I like to reuse my things and you know, this is just for instruction to show you what you can do. So I'm just kind of centering that where it looks like it's standing up straight. Probably isn't. And then I'm going to press it down from the center outward with my fingers to make sure I don't have bubbles trapped in there. And if you work from the center outward, then it pushes the bubbles to the edge and they'll come out. And then I'm pressing down the greenery that's attached, so the foliage. And I'm just going to go around the bottom of the can there too. And I'm going to take my blade and trim off what we don't need on the bottom. Keep your fingers out of the way because these things are sharp. These are good, by the way. Um, a little lightweight in your hand, but they are very sharp, and I have found them very, very handy. They came from Dollar Tree. I'm just going around the underside edge and trim that off. And it gives me a cleaner line than it would if I would cut it with scissors. So I'm just telling you here, just reminding you to cover that if you need to. So because this blessed sign here, uh, sticker, is sheer in the background, it's going to go straight on top of this like it belonged in here in the first place. So I'm going to take my little blessed sticker, I'm going to hold that can where I think it would be centered, and then decide where I want to place it. And I like it here a little more toward the bottom. It looks pretty much centered to me, so I'm just going to lay it down gently and press it down. You can certainly use your silhouette or your cricket and make your own little blessed sign or whatever you choose, gather or whatever. You could even use family, something like that. And I'm going to press that down. And there's my pretty little enamel can. I'm going to add one more detail to it before I put in some fall. Um, leaves and decor. Just going to tie that on the bottom, right around the neck. I'm using the silk ribbon, but you could use jute and loop it around a few times. You could use any of the ribbons that you already have from the projects above. And I'm just going to tie that off. Y'all excuse my children, it's summertime and it is wildness going on upstairs. Just a simple bow here to tie off the top. And this looks very farmhouse to me. What do you think? A little rustic farmhouse for you? We've got a bunch of different ways to decorate using wall stickers in this video. So I'm just giving you examples of what you might want to use, what you maybe could put in there. These are a variety of little picks that came from Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree. And of course, by Hobby Lobby, I mean Goodwill. And then I have these that I decided to use. This is like a seeded grass. And I'm going to put these in the top. Just going to bend it over so I can use it again. And I added some wheat picks that I got from the thrift store as well. And this is how it looks. What do you think about that? I think that's pretty nice. You can definitely get wheat stems for yours too and you can get them at Dollar Tree. These are uh, dried stems, but you can get the ones that are the plastic kind and they'll last you for probably ever. These, you have to really baby these real wheat dried stems. 
These little things come work. from the Dollar Tree. They are so cute. I knew I had to have one. I just wasn't quite sure what to do with them until I saw it in person. And then I thought, yep, this is going to be a little planter pot. So he's perfect. Be sure you check yours and make sure it's not broken before you leave the store. I just have a foam ball here. Use a square. Use whatever you have as long as it fits. I'm going to add some hot glue on it so it won't move around. I have hot bush from the Dollar Tree. I have a thrifted pick. And then I have some maple garland from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to dismantle my maple garland, pull off all of these little pieces because we are going to transform this one garland into several leaf picks. So here's the stem where I cut my hot bush off. I cut those off halfway so that they would be short. Now I'm going to take the remainder of those and cut those off to use as picks to go in our leaves. So nothing is wasted here. Isn't that perfect? You can use a dot of glue if you need to to hold these in place. I did on a few of these, but most of them fit nicely on the stem so they won't slide around. So simple. And you get a whole lot of picks for just the price, I guess, of $2. Okay, so you're going to push those in and place them around. Now you know with your arrangements, be sure that you are following some type of a pattern. You want to put your greenery um, down first. This is a short squatty arrangement, so I'm going to place these down and to not completely cover his face. I want to leave a little opening there. And I'm kind of following a pattern. You want to do somewhat triangle, so there's one, two, three, our hot bush is in a triangle. I'm going to add here so there's a triangle on the top as well. Then I'm going to add in some more of those where it makes sense to me. Here are the little berries from that garland. I'm using those too. And I'm just going to fluff those out. Okay. Now, moving on to this. I only had one of these picks. I'm going to take it apart because it was really too big for the project anyway. Pull all those pieces off. They don't have little openings on the end where you can push a pick through them. So I'm going to show you an alternative way to make picks out of these. Take one or two of these, put them together, line them up on another piece of that wire that you have, of the, uh, the pick wire, and then start twisting and pulling on the floral tape. When you pull a floral, the floral tape, that's what makes it start to stick. It's waxy. It's not sticky like a regular tape, so don't be misled by that. Put a little bit of pressure on that and twist it. Then when you pull the end loose, it will stick to itself and it makes the perfect little pick. It's dark green. You can get these um, floral tapes in a variety of colors, but it matches what I'm doing and you can't see anyhow down on the inside of this little short squatty arrangement. So I'm just going to place these around where they're not too close to one another so they're spread out and that the color green is spread through here. I think these colors are perfect for a cottagey feel. What do you think? Okay, so I have a couple of little pieces left that were broken and I'm just going to go in and add those in here. And by broken, I mean they were, I didn't have enough picks for them and some of them had a little bit of damage on the stem and they needed a little bit of extra love. So I just fixed them up and now I'm going to glue those in. Okay, so here's the base of a pick. We're going to cut all that randomness off the top. I'm going to use this little fall piece that I took off of a pumpkin that I did earlier and I'm going to add that right on there I'm trying to put it in a place where it's not so obvious that there's a big green pick behind it clean up any extra glue before it dries and then I'm going to press that down into there and it's really not even going to be noticeable oh my goodness the cuteness what do you think I'm having all kinds of Dollar Tree cuteness with these projects. Okay, project number three. This is our caramel apple sign. This is going to be either a 
sign that you can use just freestanding on any shelf anywhere in your house or you can use it on your coffee bar it's definitely too big for a tear tray so we're going to take some jute a sign of your choice it needs to be something thick that can sit securely on a shelf some scraps of ribbon and some red beads so I'm going to start by taking my sanding block and going around this wood cutout that I have this um, was originally from Target and so was the block sign that's underneath it I got it at dirt cheap we're just going to sand down the edges to give it more of a rustic look Please excuse my children yelling in the background. They are home with me today. My husband is gone. He's in a meeting. Okay, so I wanna do the same thing with this one. I'm just gonna go around the edges and give it that white look, that worn look. As you know, my house has a kind of a rustic style, so I like to keep everything looking kind of vintagey and comfortable and worn. So we're gonna wipe all the dust off make it nice and pretty and clean then we're going to start layering this up so in order for that glue to get good bite onto that wood I'm going to just take my sanding block and take some of that shiny paint off of there just running it back and forth and now I have a better surface to put some glue on I'm going to use a little bit of wood glue on each side each of those high spots and then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue. So we have long-term, strong hold, and a quick fix. Right there together. Try not to mix my glues up. Then I'm just going to turn this over and center it down on the top of the block. You can find cutouts at Dollar Tree as well. I don't know if they have apples yet, but you can certainly um, look for those in the fall section. You might find something. I'm just using this piece of wood cut out underneath just to stabilize this until the glue is dry so that I continue to work on the project. Now I'm going to see what I want to do to embellish the top because I know I want to do something to this apple. Do I want to add some jute? Do I want to add some ribbon? How about we add a little bit of both? So I'm going to take this ribbon on the top and just hot glue it down. You can certainly make your ribbon long enough so that it goes all the way around, but I don't intend to have this sitting where you can see the back side. So just glue it down there, and then you can go ahead and layer up some jute or just use one solid color, whatever you choose to do. And I'm going to put this around the middle. hot glue it then protect your fingers and then trim it up and start wrapping that around I don't have a particular way I want this wrapped I'm just gonna go round and round kind of crossing over here and there do whatever is best for you whatever you like and then we're gonna finish it off with a little hot glue to hold it in place I love these little fingertip protectors. They work so well. And they did come from Dollar Tree. So now I've decided that I wanna make a little coordinating leaf to go over there on the top. So I'm just gonna trim this off, take the wire off, I'm gonna fold it in half, and then make sort of an oval shape. A leaf shape. So I'm just gonna do what in my mind would be a leaf shape. And then I'm going to glue that on the top. I'm just using a little bit of that extra glue that I already had on the brush instead of using the hot glue. Look at this, isn't this cute? This is a thrifted item that I used and re refinished it and made it into a little spool holder so I can use it for my jute. Comes out nice and neat and I don't have to worry about it making a mess. Okay, so now we're gonna make a tassel. So I'm gonna go around my hand. I think I go around there about 10, 12 times. You'll have to count that. You may wanna watch it back so that we can make a tassel. Now, I'm gonna loop right through my loop 
and I'm gonna give that a few ties down a few knots okay then I'm gonna pull it down and pinch it into the shape that it needs to be I'm gonna cut the length of my tassel and I'm gonna use another piece of jute to tie a knot about a half an inch down from where the top is. I'm gonna tie that tightly. And then just begin to wrap it around and around and around. It's gonna form the top or the head of that tassel. I'm gonna glue it down. You could tie it off if you would rather do it that way. And then we're gonna take our scissors through the loops and just cut those loops off. Be sure your glue is dry so you don't pull anything loose when you go to this part. You wanna pull these down on the bottom, kinda of brush them down with your fingers, and then trim it off so that everything's nice and neat on the bottom. You can curve it or cut it straight across, whichever you prefer. We're going to embellish this, so we're gonna need a point to put beads on. A little hot glue twisted on the end of that made us a little piece of a I guess like a thread guide and we're gonna put it through there these slide in here so easy this way I really recommend this technique and it's quicker than wrapping glue um, tape around it excuse me so I just want to see how long I want to make this and I'm just gonna add my beads to way I like it and then I'm gonna tie it off so my beads don't slide around I'm gonna put a couple of knots in there to make sure that it doesn't slip back through the hole in the beads. You see how it still slips through with one? But if you tie it again and you slip another knot on top, see how it, that works? It's bigger than the hole and it won't slide out. So now we're going to go through the top of the apple right in that little hole. And then we're going to tie it down to the jute that's already there. Simply put a knot or two in there and that'll hold it. And if you prefer, you can just glue it on, whichever way. I'm giving you some options. Trim that off. And then I'm going to trim off a little, I had a little extra there on my loop that needed to come off. So now I'm going to flare it out and see if this is how I like it. You can certainly leave it down. You can do it off to the side like this and then fix it with a little hot glue. Have it in the center or you can put it across the top. And I think that's how I like it. So I'm going to add some hot glue here and just let this embellish the top of my apple. It's a little bit of a different look, but I think it's pretty. What do you think? Now we're going to make just a little bow to go on the top, I'm going to use two strands of my jute, like this, and just make a very simple little bow to go on the top. There's enough going on with all the extra, the tassel and the polka dots that I don't need anything fancy, so I think this is the perfect little way to embellish it, and it'll cover up that hole. Trim it off the way you want it, add a little hot glue, and put it right down on top of where the hole is. And that is that. Now because we have the white in the sign below, I felt like it needed, you know, just a little more, little more white in the top of it. So I'm just going to trim off this little bow. We made it the same way, just with one strand, and then stick that down. And I think that that looks a little bit better. So what do you think about these three projects? Do you like any of these and will you be trying your thrifted these? pumpkin? We're going to change them a bit. I'm going to take this Deco Art Worn Penny Paint, my favorite paintbrush. We're going to need some floral foam and something to put our arrangement on. This will be our centerpiece. It needs to be cleaned first, so I'm going to give it a good wipe down and then take a fresh paper towel and dry every bit of it off. If it's not dry, the glue will not stick. 
we want it to stay in place. Okay, so now we're going to work on this pumpkin. We're going to put protect our surface here, shake that paint up really well because it will it almost separates like oil and water. Put some of it in the dish. I did not put enough in there, but it's better to use a little and add it than to use, just to waste a bunch of paint. So I'm just going to load my brush up with paint and start putting it on the pumpkin. This video is a little more laid back. It's got a little more, a little less editing cuts as far as taking out stuff and skipping ahead. And I've just put it on fast forward so you can kind of see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So I'm laying the paint on from that brush. I'm running the brush back and forth because there's paint on both sides and all in the center of the bristles. This is very textured so it takes quite a bit to get in all of the cracks and grooves. That's what you see me doing here. I always save the bottom for last. That way I don't have paint stuck on the bottom, stuck on the paper, and then every time I move my project, the paper comes up with it and makes just a big mess. So now we're working on the bottom. Same thing here. No need to waste paint in the center because you're not going to see that. Okay, this pumpkin is going to take two coats of paint. So I'm gonna put it aside, put it in front of my fan, and dry it. That's how I dry my things. I use a standing fan. I put it on a special protected surface against the wall and I put it on high. While that is drying, we're gonna put our foam in the dish. Now you can see there that it is sunken down and we need to raise it up. So I'm going to take another piece of this foam. This is just a piece of scrap foam that probably came from an Amazon box, to be honest. I'm just gonna load that sucker down with some paint I mean some glue and then I'm going to put some glue on the top as well. You want to make sure that this part doesn't move around because you're going to be tugging around on this, poking it, maneuvering it, shove it from side to side with your with your picks, you know, your greenery and your floral and you don't want it to come loose. Okay, so now we're going to start on the next project. This is our bicycle wheel that came from Dollar Tree. Right now it is black. We're going to take our metallic copper paint outside and give it a good coat. I only used one coat, but I mean I really sprayed it down good. Here is two coats of that paint on the pumpkin. We're going to let that wheel dry while we work on our arrangement. Okay, if you want something quick and simple, here it is. Pitberry garland rolled up. There you go. But if you want to do it like me, pick some berries and stems and leaves that coordinate well with your copper pumpkin and with the decor you're already using in your home. And for me, it was these oak leaves and these leaves actually came out of I think it was a Big Lots wreath from many, many, many years ago. I've always loved the colors and I've used them in so many different projects. And the good thing about this is they still have the little picks in there. Now they aren't the strongest picks, so you will see them bend a little bit just like that. But that is not a problem. I'm just going to keep working with it. If you don't like that and you get maybe some leaves that are bending on you, just get some of those florist picks. Um, you can get the ones that are wooden, like a large toothpick on the bottom and they have the wire on the top. And you can just wrap it around the part of the stem that you do have and make your own picks. And that will make it probably a little bit quicker and easier for you once you get to this part. Okay, so I'm going to start with putting four out. I'm going to put in them, put them kind of like the corners of a square. I'll put them on the bottom flat against the sides of that bowl so they're laying straight down. The next layer is going to be one in between each of those, more of like a 45 degree angle. So we're starting to come up a little bit. You don't want to put anything straight up because the center is where you want to set your pumpkin and you want to have space. I do check that several times while I'm doing my project to make sure that my pumpkin still has room to sit flat down on that disc on the foam disc. These are thrifted branches that I found and they, I don't know if they are berries or pomegranates. I'm not sure what they are, but they almost have like a copper, oh, 
I don't know, almost a coppery color to them. And I like that. I think it's very rustic looking, very cottagey looking. So it fits for what I'm working with. You can also get branches and little pomegranate branches at Dollar Tree. You can use any type of thrifted branch that you like. These colors are matching with what I like. Use whatever colors you like. I know blue looks really nice with copper also. Uh, browns look good. Burgundy, anything really looks good with copper. It's a metal, so you can pretty much do whatever your heart desires. Now with the picks that I use, there's, it's so much on it. They're such good quality picks that you can really use every single bit. And you will also see me use the bottoms that you don't normally use in decorations with Dollar Tree picks. In other words, they look like a real piece of wood or a real branch. Once you cut the leaves and the berries off, they still look like a branch. And I do use that in this project. So you'll see me do that. If you get a better quality floral, you'll be able to use even more of it. So sometimes it's worth it just to pay a little bit more. Maybe get your items on clearance after the holidays and save them for the next year. Um, things like that. Use coupons where you can. I know certain stores like Joann's and Michael's will let you use coupons. So those are ways to save money to get some quality florals. Okay, so you can see this is filling out nicely, and my pumpkin still has a little place to rest right in the middle. I move my items around when I am decorating them. I turn them from side to side. I look above them. I look, you know, like eyeball surface to check and make sure that I don't have gaps or problems or too much of one thing in one area. So that's what you see me doing now. Turn it around. If you have a turntable, set your item on the turntable or the little um, Lazy Susan, and just turn it around. Then you can add in all little bits and picks. See, there's that stem. I'm gonna add right here to the side. Here's another one. Put those wherever you want, wherever they, you know, it looks like it feels right to you. It's nature, so nothing's perfect. And then, yeah, just like that. Do what feels right gonna keep turning that around I'm gonna keep playing around with my greenery adding in spots um, you can see there on the bottom kind of right corner that it needs a little something extra so I'm fluffing about a bit and may add another piece or two there and this is how it is looking so far so I'm happy so far I'm gonna take that bottom and use some hot glue I don't want to destroy my pumpkin it's not foam it's more like a, a hollow resin type thing I'm gonna press that down and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And then just hold the top while I'm looking at it um, so that the glue doesn't come apart and it doesn't fall over. You can see I'm holding that stem. And I like that stem the way it is. I didn't wanna paint that. That was intentional. Okay, so now here is our copper bicycle wheel. All fixed up. I only did the front because no one's gonna see the back. I'm trying to be stingy with my paints. Here's some more of those picks. These are some thrifted picks. They are maybe grapevine. I'm not sure, but they came off of another wreath that I picked apart as well. Love doing that. If you're at a thrift store and you just think to yourself, gosh, I really don't need another wreath, but I love the greenery, buy it anyway. It doesn't cost much. You can take it apart. You can use your greenery on another project and you can use a wreath for something else. It's perfect. Two for one, right? Okay, so we're going to do zip ties instead of using wire this time. It saves me a little bit of time. I have an abundance of zip ties, so this is what I'm going to do. This is not going to be completely covered. It's going to be more like three quarters in greenery. And then you're going to be able to still see part of the wheel, which I like. And you can see there's a little part there where it was still attached to the wreath that it was on. So I'm just going to cut that off and get it off of there. And now I'm going to choose the next little one. I chose the top one because it had berries in it. This little piece does not have any berries in it. I want to keep it balanced so I am paying attention to that type of thing. So I'm just going to lay this over the wire from the other pick. And then I'm going to take this one, kind of curve the branches a little bit, make sure that's what I want. And I do like that one. 
So I'm going to zip tie that on. It's overlaying that branch that's underneath it as well. Okay, and when you turn it over, you can also add wire or some more of these zip ties anywhere along the way that you see to keep it in the curve, to keep it a round, a more formed wreath. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now we're going to add it the other direction and we're going to leave a gap in the middle because we're going to do something different there. So I'm just pushing that down. This one has some berries in it. I'm going to turn it and then secure the back side. This particular pick was a little bit larger than the other, the ones I had on the other side. So it kind of stands on its own pretty well, but we're going to add another one to it. Okay. So now when it's hanging, this is how it is going to look. You can see that it's on, it's like three quarters covered and then that top, um, say 12 o'clock to, to three o'clock is gonna be open. There'll be nothing there. Now I'm pulling those out. They are on wires. So I can pull them apart and fluff them up and make them look nice. Gonna make them stand out a little bit more like a pretty fluffy leaf pile. Now we're gonna work on this section. We are going to make a funky bow. So I'm gonna choose a variety of beautiful ribbon. This one came from Dollar Tree. This orange, like a burnt orange, it came from Dollar Tree. These coordinate nicely with these colors. This is a thrifted piece of ribbon. It's like a silk on wire. So this is going to be with it. And then you'll see me adding some more on shortly. So what I'm doing is taking about 18 inches of the ribbon and I'm going to fold it in half and start making me a pile down there. 18 inches of each one of those, laying them down. You can make it longer. You can do two feet. You can do, you know, however big you want your bow to be. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So I'm going to use a couple of different ones. I ran out of my plaid. So I had to actually just use one of those, but I'm going to fill in with something else. And then this is some more thrifted. I love this one. Um, thrifted wired ribbon. It's all wired and that's very important for this type of a bow. So you're going to hold your bow up. You're going to go down about four inches. You want your tail to be longer than the bow. Okay. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm pinching it up. I'm going to hold it in the crook of my fingers between my first finger and my thumb. We're going to do the same thing. I'm measuring it against the bow that's right beside it or the loop that's beside it so we have the same measurement. You're going to do this pinching it and then tightly holding it in the crook of your hand there. You can see all these loops will be the same size. You're going to grab your pieces up like this. You're going to pinch them into your hand. I'm just measuring. You can see what's going on here. All the tails are hanging below. Going to go on to my next color. And you're going to add all your pieces in this exact same way. Kind of separate the ones that are similar. You know, you want to leave, you want to space them out a little bit. You're going to have more freedom to move it around in a bit. But when you're initially doing it, kind of space them away from each other. So here you go. You almost have a little balloon bouquet in your hand. You're going to take your zip tie and without letting go of your bow, see what I did there? I crossed it right across my hand and then I'm going to cinch my bow. Now I'm not going to do this completely tight until I check and check again to make sure that these are the same height. What I've done is just cinched them up enough to hold them together while I move them around then I'm going to tighten them up. So what I just did there was tighten, tighten, tighten as tight as you can get it and then cut off your excess. Okay. Now, when you first start doing this, you're going to think, what have I done? I've just wasted all of this ribbon, but no, give it time. This bow takes time and fluffing. See, I'm pulling all the tails out and apart, out and apart like an octopus. The loops on the top, are the octopus head and all of these are the legs that are spreading out underneath it. Do you see? Flip it over, pull them apart. Separate your patterns, separate your colors. You can do that because this is wired ribbon. 
So you're going to pull, twist, fluff, and keep working on your bow. Get those pieces where you want them and fluff them. You can twist. If your pattern is underneath, twist it and it will stay. Good quality ribbon counts a lot. Um, sometimes the ribbon that you get at Dollar Tree is not very sturdy and it won't hold. You have to really fuss with it. But some of it's really good. Like this orange and this burlap, this stuff is some great ribbon. I have used it for years and it has never let me down. So keep doing that. You want to dovetail all of your ends and then I will show you how you can just kind of curl those. If you put them between your first and second finger, I mean your, yeah, well, your pointer and your middle finger, there you go, and you run it down the ribbon, you will put a bend in the wire, like an even bend, so it will arch it up. Or see here how I did that? There you go. Or you can just bend it with your fingers. Just walk down it with your fingers and curl it under. That's what you do. You want to curl each one of those little ends under. And then you can trim it where you need to trim it. Um, and it's going to look nice for you. Now this part, part is optional. Um, but this is how I attach this type of a ribbon to my arrangements. I'm going to take a piece of thin floral wire. It needs to be sturdy enough that it won't, you know, that you can feed it through the ribbon and you're going to just feed it through a couple of the ones that are that you can reach in the center there so i'm just going in a circular motion going through the ribbons on the bottom you can see there then i'm going to pull them up so that i have to I have the little see there little hanger holders little free wires i'm going to give it an initial twist or two then i'm going to flip it over and just wrap it around the wire on the back of the wreath now you may think, okay, you just turned that upside down and squished it, and now you got to refluff it. Well, yeah, you do. You do have to refluff it. But I want you to know, in crafting, one of my favorite things to do is fluff a bow. It's not for everybody, but I love it. I love seeing a transformation. Look at that bow. That bow is the perfect bow for this arrangement. But I'm missing the fact that my plaid ribbon there is just... We're going to fix that. We're going to add some more plaid. So I'm going to take a curtain hanger, or this may be a shower curtain hook. Who knows? I'm going to take the hanger part off, take my copper paint, and I'm going to spray paint this ring copper. While it's drying, I'm adding some more of that plaid ribbon. I had a tiny bit left. It wasn't long enough to put it in the initial bow, but it's enough to add some more tails. So I'm going to dovetail it, fold it in half into a V, and I'm going to place it right there and leave the tails a little bit longer than the rest of it because I really, really love that ribbon. Okay. See there? Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. Okay, so here's some faux leather ribbon. It is a brownish color. It's the only one I've been able to find at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to add it to this ring to make a hanger. I've seen these on items um, at craft stores. And I thought, you know, I could definitely do that myself and show you guys how to do it so that we get a more high-end look without paying $50, $60 for it. I mean, how much would you pay for this wreath if you saw this? And don't you think something that is this quality could be found in a craft store or a, dec you know, a home decor store? Definitely. I could definitely see this hanging in Kirkland's or, you know, someplace like that, an at-home store. So you're just going to feed this through the top, pinch it down. You can protect your fingers. You always should. I just didn't because this is really thick and I didn't need to for this. I didn't feel. I'm going to add some here to, to secure my ring. See, they're saving the paint. It was still silver on the back. And there we go. Look at that. All right. I want to add right here just a little pumpkin. I felt like it needed a little more of a reminder. Of fall coming up. I'm going to put that partly on the ribbon and partly on the frame and on the leaves that are underneath it and press it down. And there we go. Is this something that you would buy and have in your home? I love the look of these. These are going to be great in my own home. 
And I hope that this is something that has inspired you to do something with some Dollar Tree items. So for project number one, I'm using paint stirs, nine of them. Now what I'm doing is making a fence or I'm making a gate, like a garden gate. So I'm using these paint stirs and I am marking those down to give it the look of a gate or a fence panel. Just using my pencil and marking those on there. And then you can use whatever cutting device you want to use. My wood does split a little bit cutting it this way, but it goes right back together and you can't even tell that it has any damage. So I'm going to clean up my edges as much as possible. And then I'm going to use my sanding block to just smooth out any of the little splintered ends. You're just going to rub it back and forth and just kind of rock it side to side to round the corners just a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to do the same thing with this one because these are our supports. One is going to go on the top to cover up the little grooves and then one of course on the bottom. Just like you would see if you were walking down the road in the country and you see a little picket fence beside you. So I'm just going to use my little sanding block here to clean that up. This is a sanding block that I've had for quite some time that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's a very affordable tool for you to use to add to your crafting toolkit. Today I am very happy to be joining the Fab Five Friend Collab. And this is hosted by the crafting cousins Trish and Kay. And they have invited five friends to come and challenge each other with items to make crafts with. So as I said before, I was challenged by the crafting cousins and then you will look in the box below and you'll see the one that I challenged. So be sure you watch everybody's videos and comment. All right, I'm going to take some wipes now and some of my antiquing wax and I'm going to stain each one of these. You can leave it bare if you like that color but I wanted to make mine look a little bit darker. You could even paint these white if you like farmhouse or if you want a white picket fence. This is real easy to do. You don't have to use a paintbrush. You just go around your planks. I'm gonna do all the sides and the ends as well. And then, so we got our support pieces done. Now we're gonna do each one of our little pickets. Gonna keep turning that cloth and then add some more if you need to add some more, just like I'm doing. Rub it in really good so you don't have um, a chunk of paint in one spot. You want to have even distribution of your color. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just initially laying it on each one of these. You can see it really brings out the texture in that wood. So I like that. I like a rustic look and to see that in that wood just really brings my heart a little bit of joy. It's the simple things, right? It is the simple things. Okay, once they are dry, this is how they look. They will lighten up just a little bit. And we're going to reassemble our fence or our gate to look like so. Simple. I'm going to use a little bit of wood glue and just a little stick that I have over here. This is just a little crafting um, little piece of wood. And I'm going to decide exactly where I want to put it and then how I'm going to put it down. So I'm going to flip it over and we're going to start off by using some popsicle sticks to secure the back down. So here we go. Tongue depressors, popsicle sticks. You can use whatever size that you have as long as they don't extend the sides and show. You don't want them to show. I'm going to use a little hot glue here and cover these up. Now it doesn't go all the way down to the last plank, but that won't matter because we're gonna overlap it. Again, this is the back, nobody's going to see it. It's gonna be ideally against a wall, but if it's something that you wanted to hang maybe on a glass door or something like that, you might consider covering this with some craft paper so you don't see all of the hardware that we're putting on the back to hold it together. And this works really well, I have found. Um, this is not something that I would put outside by any means, so you don't have to worry about the humidity, maybe making your glue break away and your project fall apart. This works for me. Okay, so now it is together very nicely, very securely. 
We've got it flipped over. Now is when we're gonna use our wood glue. We're gonna use a little wood glue for a long, sturdy fix, and we're gonna use a little bit of hot glue on there also to make it work quickly. You can certainly just use the hot glue if you don't wanna use, you know, if you don't wanna to fool with this, or you could just use the wood glue and clamp it down and let it dry. I just have fun alternating. So little here, little here. Put the hot glue down last because it dries fastest. There we go. That can be clamped in place, especially if you have one of those planks that wants to kind of bow out. Um, I ordered mine, my paint stirs from Amazon and a large pack. I'll put that link below for you so you can find some very affordable and I still have lots and lots and lots of sticks for more projects. Okay, just a little bit here and there you can see now I've made a mess down there there's a piece of hair or some fibers or something stuck in there not a worry you're not gonna see it we're not gonna sweat the small stuff there you go BAM covered up and a little clamp here and a little clamp there those clamps came from Dollar Tree as well just want to make sure that nothing is bowing out in a way look at these cool things these are really good weights to hold things um, flat, and I love to use them in my projects. Plus, they're pretty to look at. I think they're electricity insulators. Tell me what you think they are. I think that's what they are. Okay, now we're gonna pretty it up. Look at these gorgeous gold pieces of greenery. Or would we call those goldery? They're gonna go up top. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to it because I love orange and rust colors in the fall. A little thrifted pumpkin and this thrifted sign. The sign probably came from Hobby Lobby, something like that maybe. And I'm just trying to decide what I want to go on the top, which pumpkins I want to use. You do the same thing and choose whatever you like. I'm going to use a piece of this garland from Dollar Tree and just pick off the ones that match. You can see here that I'm looking to see what colors I want to use. I'm going to take the hardware off the back of this little box sign because if you leave it on there it won't lay flush against your little gate or fence. And we want to be sure that that glue has nice flat surfaces to adhere to so they don't come apart. I'm going to go around the edge of this black to just make it give it a little worn look here. Again I like rustic. If you don't like to do that, you certainly don't have to. You can skip that step. I'm going to add some hot glue on the borders here on the back. Dollar Tree has beautiful little box signs like this that you could certainly use. Something You could use something thrifted or maybe something you used last year. You can repurpose it. Okay, so these greenery pieces, or goldery pieces, they are on wire. And they're easily flexed into the position that we like. You do not have to leave your, your picks in the way that they came from the store. You can bend them. Bend them and flex them to your desired result. So this is so simple. I'm gonna put one gold on one side, one on the other, other. One orange on one side, one on the other. And then I'm just gonna use a little tie here to tie it off. You can use a pipe cleaner, you can use wire, you can use whatever you like to go in the center of yours. Clip off your excess. And there's the start of your swag for the top of this little garden gate or fence piece. Here I am cutting off, and really honestly, this is so thin, the plastic that holds it on, you could probably just pull these off. But I cut them off, and I'm gonna be using these to layer underneath and around it. You can put a couple of pieces together here and there. I do this a lot on my projects, kind of layering the greenery. That's easy. So we're going to start by going to the top and we're going to glue that down. A clamp is going to be your best friend in the circumstance because your wires will try to flex away from your surface and you want that glue to have a chance to harden before you move away from that part. 
Now there's some glue under there, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And don't glue your clamp down. I'm gonna add my greenery over there. Same thing, it's mirrored. What you do on one side, you do on the other. This is like the simplest swag ever. And I'm gonna take this cute little pumpkin and my craft knife, and I'm going to shave about mm, a third of it off so that it will lay flat against my project. Very easy. I just kept cutting away on this thing. Okay, then you're gonna add some glue. And press this down on there. I'm gonna press it into my leaves and in the little space that is between the leaves on the board so that nothing is loose and flying away. For these little white pumpkins, I didn't have any picks and I'm going to make some out of some leftover greenery stems that I had. They were brown, so I thought they would work. That's all there is to it. Now our pumpkins have little stems. I have some extra little bits of this. Um, I don't know if you would call this like seeded grass maybe. I'm just gonna add those pieces in there, here and there. Once is never enough for me. If you've watched my videos, you know I'm constantly going back and adding things here and there. I like to do what feels right, so I just keep kind of fooling with it. I kind of go off into my own little zone and keep working until something just feels right. And then I'll know it's complete. I found some acorns in my stash, so I'm gonna add those. I think this is gonna fit nicely into a rustic home. Maybe a little bit cottagey, maybe a little bit farmhousey. And I would almost say with the gold on there, maybe a little bit rustic glam. What do you think? Could this pass as rustic glam? It might. Okay, so I've just added that other little pumpkin and because now there's a space, I'm gonna add one more leaf just to fill it in. I don't wanna cover up my words because the sign is really pretty. It's got gold accents and gold writing. It's really pretty. Okay, so so far the swag is looking good. Now I wanna add one more thing. Look what I found at the thrift store. It's a tiny spindle. I don't know what it came from, but it was all by itself. And then I thought, hey, I bet some of these wood beads I have will fit. And look there, they fit perfectly. And they hold that up away from the little piece of wood or tongue depressor or a paint stirrer underneath there. So there's a little gap. You can make a ribbon bow. You could put a little tea towel. You could put anything right there. What do you think about this project? Oh my gosh, I'm so tickled with this. You're gonna wanna flip it over and put any type of hanger of your choice on the back. A ladder project. Okay, this is going to be like a little, a pumpkin garden ladder. Let's call it that. Right now you can see me trying to get my placement. And then here I'm doing the same cutting method as I used before. I'm going to take my sandpaper. I've just overlaid a rougher grit and I'm gonna just rock that back and forth and then move it side to side until I get that nice and smooth. See there? I'm gonna do that until it is perfectly smooth. I don't want any cut fingers or splinters anywhere. And I want it to look like it was intended to be this way, not like it was a paint stirrer in a previous life. This time we won't be staining or painting it. I'm going to leave it the exact same color that it is. Okay, so we're going to start figuring out where we want the rungs on our ladder. And I'm going to start putting down some glue. A stripe of wood glue, a stripe of hot glue. One for stronghold and one for permanent, well, one for quick hold, let's put it that way. Okay, same here. And we're gonna do this down on the bottom too. I'm out of the camera, so you can't really see what I'm doing on the bottom, but I promise you, I'm going to do that. Clean up if you get any excess glue, like I do all the time, just to get you a little pick or 
something and just wipe that right off. If you do it while it's still wet, it'll come off and you'll barely notice. Now I'm using these little weights again to hold those down until they get a good grip on each other. So here's our ladder. Cute. Cute little ladder. And I'm going to use this. This came out of a book that came from Dollar General. Whimsical lettering. Here is the code. And I'm just going to use, I like the happy place sign, so I'm going to make a little sign for this project with this. This is an option if you don't have a Cricut, if you don't want a freehand lettering, and you don't have a printer. Get one of these cute books. I'm going to put this little chalkboard looking sign on this scrap of wood that I already had. Came off another project, probably something from Dollar Tree. And it needs to be cleaned up just a bit, so I'm going to just knock the splinters off the edges here and clean that up. Simple, simple. And then I'm going to decide how I want this. Once I lay it down, I'm just going to bend it so that I know where my borders are going to be. And I know exactly how I want to place it on that piece of wood. Just running a crease down there. Okay. Now you can just take a glue stick, which is what I'm using there on the bottom. There we go. And just covering it side to side and be sure that you get the corners and all the edges really well. Place that down and now you can trim off what you don't want on there or you can use a sanding block and get it off. I'm using my little wallpaper tool to press it down. And then you can see how easily it comes off with the sandpaper. You get a nice crisp edge that looks like it was supposed to be there all along. Plus it's going to match up with my other piece, that um, the black sign that I did, the garden gate. It's going to have that same little white edge as the black sign that we did. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to start making this ladder look like it has been leaned up against the side of a barn and we have some beautiful fall weeds growing up through it. So I'm just going to wrap this around the back of my ladder. I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to take some more pieces of scrap greenery that I have. Here's some more, some little flowers, and then this beautiful pumpkin. Pull him off the pick, and I'm going to start gluing down. Put a little glue across that stem. A little bit of paper will help hold that in place back there, make it look nice and neat. And then, because these are on wires, I'm going to twist these around just like a pumpkin vine grows and clings as it stretches out. That's what I'm going to do with this weed. It's like it's been the ladder's been there for since the 40s. And we've got some beautiful greenery growing up through it. You can just twist those around, give them a little hot glue support where it's needed. I'm making a mess. And you just want to um, press that down so that the wire doesn't pull away. And then once it's set up a little bit, then you can move on and twist it another way. And that's what you see me doing here. Just making it look wild and making it look like it would if it was all on its own, lonesome for years. What do you think? Isn't that cute? I love this. It's very cottagey looking as well, I think, this particular project. Okay. I am so happy to be working with Trish and Kay again. I have worked with them before and they are wonderful, genuine ladies. I appreciate them so much and you are going to love all the videos from all the other creators in the Fab Five videos. Plus you have a chance to win one of two cards. Who doesn't need a gift card, right? You could use a gift card, an Amazon gift card to start your Christmas shopping. You could use it to buy craft supplies. 
you could do anything you want because it will be yours, but you have to follow those rules. So be sure that you refer back to the rules at the beginning of the video. All right, so I wanna put my happy place sign right on the top. Just gonna clamp it down while I continue to work with the rest of it so nothing comes loose. Now I know that I wanna use this pumpkin here and I think I can use this pumpkin as a stand to hold the ladder up so that it will be freestanding on its own. So you're just gonna see me using my craft knife again or my utility knife. These come in a three pack. You can get them at Dollar Tree. I recommend them, highly recommend them. They slice through just like butter. Foam, foam board, whatever it is you're cutting. Okay, so I've cut out enough room, as you can see there, where the leg of the ladder will fit right through it. And look, it stands on its own. Y'all, Walmart has some really nice pumpkins and gourds out right now too, so if you're not finding what you like at Dollar Tree, Walmart's prices are comparable and the quality is fantastic. Mine, of course, was thrifted. But I've been watching, I've been keeping an eye out for y'all. We want to do affordable, yet high-end looking crafts for our home. I'm gonna add some of these little weedy flowers here and there, adding my greenery here and there. I like to use a variety of greenery so that it does look like it's growing in the wild. I think that's part of the cottage aesthetic to make it look like, you know, you're walking out in a garden, you're walking out on a country road and you're seeing all the beauty. And we don't want things just growing straight up. Let's do some to the side. Let's layer it, you know, do it like God did it. Do it like you see out in the wild. And I'm still adding here and there until I get it exactly where I look at it and say, yeah, okay, this is good. I wanna add one more little thing and I'm adding just a scrap piece of string that I have tied into a bow, just a simple bow and I'm adding it right on the edge of the sign on the top. And I think because it looks like rope, more like rope than my other jute and, and other cording, so I think that this looks really nice. I think it fits well with the project. And this is how it turned out. This just might be my favorite one, guys. It's really hard for me to decide. And I've displayed it here for you so you can see what it looks like with some more cottage and rustic type items. And I think that they go quite well together and I think that they are the perfect rustic, rustic cottage look. Do you agree? I'm gonna use the craft knife. We're gonna use some type of a base. I'm just gonna use a wood round ornament. I have a square leaf. You can find these about anywhere. And then a little pad of fall paper. I'm looking for a color or a print that I like, and I believe that I will use this grateful sign. Give thanks, Thanksgiving. Yep, this will be a good one for this project. You can also use little fabrics. These are some little vintage fabric pieces, or vintage inspired, I'm not sure that they're vintage. This glue stick will work perfectly to put this down. Again, I've said it a billion times, I know I say it a lot but get all those corners, get all the edges. You want it to stick down well for you because it's easier to deal with when it comes to cutting it out and it gives it a better finished look. I'm putting this on at an angle. I'm gonna press it down. I'm gonna take my wallpaper smoother and smooth it down from the inside outward. We want those bubbles to run away from us so we press them to the outside. Okay, now, whatever you wanna use to cut out, you can use to cut out. I'm just gonna use my little utility knife, my craft knife, my cutter, whatever you wanna call it. These are not gonna be perfect and I am not aiming for perfection because in this project, we will be using some sanding to get our edges in the right shape. So you can see there's some little excess that didn't come off, just like that. 
Instead of the sanding block, I'm going to use a folded piece of sandpaper because it will get into those cracks and corners and curves a little bit easier. So I'm just going to use this to start with, and you can see there that it is sanding it smoothly down. It's taking those little white pieces right off. And by the way, you can paint the edges if you prefer a painted look, but I, I like that it is kind of a raw look. Check this trick out. This is an emery board or a fingernail file. You can use this to get in those tight spaces to really, really work those little pieces out of there. Okay, so once it is done, this is how it looks. You can Mod Podge over the type if, top if you would like, but you don't have to. And you could also do both sides if you wanted something reversible. So here's an option. I always try to give you an option. You can put this leaf down on the raw wood like this for a rustic look. But if you're going for something a little more cottage core, you can take a piece of this fabric or something that is coordinated but with a vintage sort of look and you could put it down like that. But for my home, I'm gonna leave it a little bit more on the rustic side. So I'm trying to see where I need my glue to go and I'm gonna add it straight on down on my wood round. So this is it so far once the glue is set up. And I'm gonna layer one more leaf on top. This is a leaf ornament. This came from the thrift store. You can use a regular leaf on top and put a sticker on it or you can put a sticker right on top of your leaf, whatever you wanna do. And I'm just gonna add that down. It doesn't fit perfectly like a puzzle piece, but it's close enough. And I'm not looking for perfection. Look at that, isn't that sweet? Thankful for you, I'm thankful for you. All my subscribers, anybody who watches my videos, every thumbs up, every share, every like, I am very thankful for all of that. I never take it for granted. Okay, so to finish off this little leaf, I'm gonna just use a piece of this cotton twine, make me a tiny little bow, and I'm gonna put that right on that little opening on the top. Do whatever you like with that. What do you think about that? Isn't that sweet? Okay, so for this sign, I have this little stand that came with something that I got, I believe at the thrift store, but it was a, it's a sign holder. It actually held up some words or something. Oh, that sign says fall harvest. Okay, so if you have something like this, that would be great, but um, I'm gonna show you what you can do if you don't have that. So I'm gonna go back to the truck here and take this white marker that came from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna go around my edges and just kinda put a, a little more highlight on here with this marker. I'm going over the edges of it and I'm gonna be going around the bumper and all of that. You can do this if you would like. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Also, you could use a brown for this. You could use um, a furniture stain marker that you can get from Dollar Tree, or you can use black, or you don't have to do this at all. But I wanted to make this look a little more high-end than what we have, so I figured a little more detail couldn't hurt it. You can also go over your pumpkins if you would like. I'm gonna take my sanding block and try to get the remainder of that off. For some reason, when it was manufactured, it did not have a complete coverage on there. It just didn't. And so I thought, well, if I wanna keep those words, I can go back over it. And I'm just taking a metallic marker here and just going over the words. Now I sanded this down to where I felt was pretty smooth, but even so, when I went back over it with the marker, you can see there's some grit and it's making the print not look so great. So I didn't like it. I did let it dry and then I just took this, this is a sanding block too, but this is actually like a nail file that you can get from, I believe Dollar Tree. And I've just sanded that off with kind of a fine grit so that I didn't go all the way through my white. And then I'm going to erase it now. So I'm gonna use some of this linen white chalk paint you could use acrylic paint you know whatever you want to use in here or you could even use gray and maybe color the whole thing out so that you don't even have a a little tag sign back there but I wanted to leave it because at this point I wasn't exactly sure 
what I wanted to do here. But this gave me the ability to have some free space to write in, to put a sticker on, or whatever. So I've left this in the video so that you can see, you can fix your mistakes, and you have a few more options. Now, I'm gonna take the same bag of, of little words that I have had, that I have used already from Dollar Tree. This is a wonderful value. There's six in a pack, and I hope you can find them. They are just raw wood. You can paint them, you can leave them as is, you can use a marker, whatever you wanna do. And some of these words actually fit right on that, that on that little sign there. Now this one is the one I'm gonna use. It's a little bit large for it, but it doesn't matter to me. So I'm gonna take this Cherry Furniture Repair Marker, and you can see what the color is on paper. It's actually darker when you put it on wood, so you might wanna test your markers out first if you get them. They come in a three pack, I absolutely love them. Look at the coverage with these things. They are wonderful. And I have used them for furniture repair, and they work great. So you can choose whatever colors you want. There are lighter ones. You can, like I said before, you can use paint or some type of marker if you wanted to use a different color. Orange would probably be pretty, but my home is rustic and I thought that this brown color is close to the color of the wheels and it definitely has that rustic vibe that I'm always trying to go for. Little hot glue will attach this down and I'm gonna try to center it right there. And just press it down. Hot glue will hold it there nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an option. If you don't have one of those stands that I have, you can easily use Jingle Blocks, the ones that come from Dollar Tree, and make your own stand. I'm just showing you here how to do it. There's a little dent in my table, so I stood these up on my um, ruler just so I have a flat surface when I glue it. And I'm just going to end to end put this on here the sign's not heavy there's really no need in using wood glue or anything like that if you want it more sturdy and more permanent you can certainly use wood glue but i'm not going to be using this i'm going to use my stand i just want to show you how you can do it you're going to make two rows like this of six blocks each and just try to get them nice and straight and then you'll be able to sandwich your sign in between with some hot glue and that should hold it. You don't have to leave them standing up. You could actually lay them down and make it a little, little more flat. It may give it a little more stability. But there you go. Okay, but for me, I'm going to use the stand because this is what I have. I'm gonna add some hot glue to the bottom of these tires and just try to get it seated down in the little slot here. It'll pretty much hold itself there until it dries. And then after it's dry, you can go on to embellishing. Now these little wooden stickers originally came from Target, but I got them at Dirt Cheap last year because I could get them at a very cheap price. And I've used the same couple of packages of these wood stickers for two years. You've seen them in my other videos. I love working with these, they're so cute and they're thicker than a regular sticker so they can stand on their own and I like that. Plus they're adhesive on the back, obviously they're a sticker, but you can reinforce it with hot glue or anything that you want. You're gonna see me moving these pumpkins around a little bit as I try to get them organized and try to arrange them how I like them. And because they will stick there like that, um, you can take them off and move them around a little bit if you don't press them down too hard, but you get the idea kind of what I was looking at to see if I liked it. And I'm just gonna move them around a little bit, put some more of these darker colored pumpkins and remove a few of the little glittery ones. You can always paint them if you want them a different color. Okay, so now I have these little burlap type leaves. I have two different types. I have an oak leaf that is brown and I have a maple leaf that is orange, if I'm getting my trees right. Feel free to correct me in a nice way, of course. The great thing about this is the long wire that comes off the back. It will allow us a little extra, mm, a little extra base to hold it down, I guess, it's kind of what I'm getting at, because it'll go down in the slots underneath. But I like the way this looks. It looks like the truck is just speeding past the 
the pumpkin patch and some leaves are kicking up by the tires. I like that. Okay, so you can bend these because they are on a wire. Make them look a little more lifelike. Give them some dimension. Bend those wires together so that they stay in place. And then you can just press that bent wire right down into that little crack that is underneath the truck in the little stand. And it works out perfectly. And I'm gonna stand it up and I'm gonna add some hot glue just to lock it in place. Do that on both sides. You can trim it down if you want, but I feel like all of this stuff touching in there together and the glue on top of it really holds it in place. As I've said before, it's important when you're doing any type of, I guess, craft that you're going to have dimension. It's going to be more 3D instead of a flat, like a flat sign or something. You kind of want to look at it from all angles. Whoops, I lost the pumpkin. Look at it from all angles and make sure that you have everything the way you like it. All right, now, I've got to have a bow on this. This is too cute not to bow it up. So here we go. I'm going to use some of my thrifted, checked, or gingham, whatever you want to call it, ribbon. And I'm going to make an easy bow here. It's not actually named an easy bow, but it's pretty easy. You see what I did there. I made a loop, like a breast cancer awareness loop. Pressed the loop straight down into the bottom part. And then, so then we have two loops and two tails. Easy, easy. It's such a simple bow. And I use it more and more because it's just so, it's pretty. It's a pretty bow and it's a simple bow. And I think with rustic and farmhouse, you want kind of a simple look, you know? I've just used a little bit of, um, this was the tie off of one of the signs, I think. And just repurposed it to tie that up in the middle. Trim off what we don't need. I use that because it was laying there. I do keep my scraps, so I keep them to the side in case I want to use them for anything else. I'm just fluffing that bow out a little bit. Everything is dry. Everything is set up nicely and it is in place. And then I'm going to add this little bow over here on the side of the truck. It's going to cover up the tag holes in the top and I think it just gives it a cute little look. So fluff it out. I did this about a billion times when I craft. And I'm just gonna cut these tails in a slant. And then you can use a little bit of hot glue, just a little bit, cause you don't want it to shine, you know, to peek out through your ribbon. You almost want it to appear as though it is just sitting up there on its own. Now, this is a scrap off of something else I had. I'm going to make, you see this really simple bow? Then I'm going to double it so that I have four loops. All I did was double it back and now I have four loops and two tails. If you don't do the little, if you can't get that, that little double part, then you can surely do two bows and stack them on top of each other. We don't want to make things more difficult than they have to be. But I thought this was cute. And it matches the kind of burlap that is in the leaves that we have there. I want to add a little more. So this is fabric and feel free to alter anything that you get. Any picks, any, anything that you get to make it your own. That's what the channel's about, right? Making it your own. So I'm making this leaf my own. And I'm just going to cut a little piece and tuck it here because if I put the whole leaf there, it would be way too much, way too big for that area. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pull my wire off, put it aside because it can be used for another project. And I'm going to trim down this orange leaf. And then just a little more hot glue and I'm going to layer it on. I think I'm going to put it behind there because I have the orange on the top. So I have a little variation in color there. I like that. And this is how it looks. And I like it. Do you like this little aqua sign? Okay, so now the third sign is the green truck hanging sign. 
I'm just showing you I've got some picks here that I might want to use definitely need some florals I have a scrap of thrifted fabric I have some of the these are larger size they're bigger than Jenga's so I'm measuring those for you so you can see what size they are if you have the size great if you don't go ahead and use what you have and I'm going to use this gorgeous thrifted ribbon I pulled it right off of something else and brought it home with me and then this gingham here is the little truck and then here is a Valentine sign that I have used twice and we're going to use it again I'm going to lay it down on top of my fabric trim it off where I have at least an inch maybe a little over an inch on the edges so that I can hot glue it so I'm going to put glue down and I'm going to tuck it over and this is how this is going to look all the way around glued down nicely trim off what you don't need and it kind of looks like an ironing board doesn't it okay who still irons their clothes by the way is anybody okay so now you can see what these blocks are for I'm gonna make a little shelf almost in the back here this is gonna hold this away from the sign and it's also gonna hold our floral foam so that we can do a little arrangement I'm gonna use just plain hot glue here you can use something more permanent if you'd like but because I recycle my projects and use them again and again on many different things I don't want a totally permanent hold if I do want a permanent hold it's gonna be something that I don't intend to take apart it's gonna be in my house a long time so I found this cute little vinyl cutout it's a peel and stick that came from Target but I got it at dirt cheap and there's two in a pack and I thought hey let's try this this is a Merry Christmas sign I got for 10 cents from Dollar General last year and I used white chalk paint on the back of it I just use one good coat now I'm peeling this off and doing it with my fingers in case you are not someone who owns a Cricut then you wouldn't have transfer paper so I'm just trying to show you here it can be done without transfer paper but you have to take your time and you got to be sure of where you put it when you put it down because the font is so thin that you would definitely tear something trying to lift it I do believe but there you go and I'm, I'm okay with where it's laying because I can't change it now then I'm just gonna take my leaves and just add those on there kind of wherever and this is what we have for that now I'm gonna rough it up a little bit by taking that same fingernail file sanding block and just go all around my edges I know that I want to put it on the top and in order to get my placement and to make sure that it is straight I'm going to use this little ruler at the top just to give me a little space here so I know where I want to put it I've added hot glue on the back of the sign and I'm just going to press it down so that it doesn't come apart you can put something on top of this to hold it in place until it is firmly set if you would like you could use some clamps over the spots with the glue so that it stays in place until it is dry okay so now I'm just using my foam my block against the foam to determine how thick I want my pieces of foam to be I'm just using a metal ruler to just slice this right down and you dust it off and get all that stuff off of there because it's gonna make a mess I don't even have to use hot glue to put this in place I've trimmed another piece for the other side and it fits in there and sits perfectly by itself now the truck is going to sit like this and I'm going to use this again as a spacer to make sure that I get my truck exactly where I want it this isn't glued down it's just a spacer for making this straight I'm going to use hot glue again all around the edges to place this down I'm standing above it trying to make sure that I have it somewhat centered and I'm gonna place it down you can slide it a little bit now I'm gonna weight this down because I don't want anything to come away now for the bow on top I'm using this beautiful pumpkin ribbon it is wired 
and I'm going to just pinch it up just like that same as we did on the other one but this one is going to be stacked I'm gonna add several layers on this one I'm gonna pinch this one up in the middle put that on top and then I was on the search for what I wanted to go in the middle I wanted something a little more burlappy something a little more neutral so I took some of this burlap I guess we're gonna call it ribbon I don't know if you would call this ribbon or not but it is definitely not wired you can pull the edges away if you would like to and that will help it to fray and make it a little more rustic if you fold it against the curve that will also help it lay a little more flat and I've decided that it should go right in the middle I like the way that looks it gives a little buffer between the prints now I'm gonna take another little piece of scrap jute and just tie a couple of knots in the center there tightly so that it doesn't come apart I'm just using my thumb to hold that knot in place because it will slip it will slip I'm gonna dovetail my ends here and like I said pull pull your little excess away if you would like a little bit of fraying it's really a cute rustic look and then I'm just going to fluff I'm going to adjust a little bit to make sure that I get my loops the size I want and then I'm going to dovetail what else needs to be dovetailed fluffing that bow as usual you know how we do here on my channel we fluff it to death and then trim off this because you're not going to need this on, on here we're going to glue it now I know I want it at the top I'm going to put a good bit of glue up there on my top above that sign I'm going to center it above there and then use a clamp to hold it in place this clamp actually came with my lighting kit so but you can use any kind of clamp you have so now I've switched up my florals and I'm going to use these picks use whatever you like but I like these they kind of look they don't look like wheat but they give that airy feel and I like that I think it's a very farmhouse addition to this rustic project as well as that striped fabric in the background I'm gonna add some of these little orange flowers here and there if your picks are too small then you can just add a pick off of something else and these beautiful little puff balls I don't know what these are but they they came from Dollar Tree and I love them I'm gonna put them as little twinsies and I'm gonna put them in sets of two in here I think they look really cute in here what do you think do you like these have you crafted with these yet I've seen a lot of people haul them but I have not really seen people using them so I'm just curious all right I'm trimming up a little bit on my bows again trim where you need move things around if you need a little bit of glue to hold things in place you can go ahead and do that and this is our third sign what do you think about this cute huh all right so we're gonna need a device to hang it and I'm going to use a little hanger off of another project I removed this off of something else I'm gonna add some hot glue here right around that hole and just put it right there it's not a perfect fit but it won't matter that glue is gonna take up okay space. now for my favorite too we're gonna use these monogram pumpkins from Dollar Tree I have a P and an A and I'm gonna show you how you can take these apart they're in two different layers here you're gonna take a thin wooden roller or maybe a, a thin butter knife or something and just pry it gently underneath it's just held down by glue no nails then pull off the bow same thing here we're gonna go underneath press try not to pull or break that top layer and then we're gonna pull it off pull that bow away now we have two pieces for each one of these pumpkins that we can work with and we're going to do them in opposites I'm going to take some of this scrap paper that we just use so that our items will coordinate I'm going to trim it cut it out and now I'm going to put the glue on it press it down simple simple I'm using the smooth side of that A either way it will fit and then the glue strip that's on the back is almost like rubber cement it comes off so easy I just pried the corner and then pulled it off 
Now, some options, you can use scrapbook paper, you can use that cork board, whatever you like to use. But for me, on this orange pumpkin, I am going to use this beautiful plaid paper that I've had for a few years. You can see that it came from Target originally, but I got mine at Dirt Cheap. I have traced it out and trimmed it down. And now I'm going to lay this beautiful, beautiful blue and orange plaid paper down on top of this pumpkin and using my wood ruler I'm just going to smooth it all out. It is a little bit of texture on there so you know I'm just making sure that I press it down nicely. Now you can see there is an overhang from the paper which is not a problem. We're going to go around with a sanding block and just clean up those edges. You can see how that paper just frays away and falls off. Gives it a nice look. All right now I want to add some leaves to this pumpkin I'm going to trim down some of my large burlap leaves. Bet you know where these came from. Dollar Tree! Yep, you guessed right, of course. Okay, hopefully they'll still have these. I got mine last year, so I had some left. Then I'm going to also use the oak leaf. So I have part of the maple leaf that I've cut, part of the oak leaf that I've cut, and I'm just trying to find the position that I like on the pumpkin for my little leaves. You know, I generally put everything to the left, but for some reason, I wanted this on the right. So here I am trying it on the right, and this is why I haven't glued the center section down yet. I want to put the leaves on first. Since I know I want them to overlay like that, I'm just going to hold them and glue them that way. Using my little ruler here. Yes, I used it as a paint stirrer, so it looks terrible right now. Still serves its purpose, though. I love it. All right. Again, holding that in place because I know that's the right placement for it, I'm going to add some hot glue and press it down. Protect your fingers. There is a chance that the glue can come through the burlap. I'm going to take my hot glue, put it all over this layer of the pumpkin, and put it back in place. But wait, we're not done. We have a little something extra. Let's add a pretty bow. This is some ribbon that my friend and neighbor gave to me. From her stash when she was cleaning out her supplies and it's a very pretty little ribbon with little I don't even know what you call that trim on it it's cute though I'm gonna do another one of those super simple bows this video is all about simplicity so I'm gonna yep that's the right size just like that I'm gonna take two little pieces of jute the same size and I'm going to, at the same time, make the exact same type of bow. Pull it out, make it look nice, trim it down, then I'm going to trim that bow, that ribbon bow, down to the same size. And just decide how I want to layer these on the pumpkin. Hey, if you haven't subscribed already, I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. We are over 3,000, so that's a milestone, and I'm so happy to be there. Thank you for all of your support and love. Think about it. Here's Cute. my pumpkin. Okay, so going on to the next pumpkin. This is how it's going to look, and we want to embellish the plaid section. I'm going to put my middle back on the pumpkin. You could paint the background if you wanted, but I like it just the way it is. I like the white there. And I've chosen this pumpkin out of a set of uh, vinyl cutouts that were originally from Target and I got them at Dirt Cheap. I'm going to put this down. I'm not using, I'm not going to use any um, transfer paper because I want you to see this can be done. You just have to be patient and careful in your placement. Okay, so now we have our little pumpkin down there and it looks super cute. I've got some coppery looking wired ribbon here and it's like a sheer ribbon. And also some of the same gingham ribbon that I used on another project in this video. And I'm just going to trim it up too. And I'm going to make a pretty bow for it. So this bow is a little bit different. I'm just going to cross it over and then walk the middle down to the bottom. Just like that. I'm going to pinch it up and then you can use some type of a clip to hold it in place while you work on the next layer of your bow. And this is going to be this one. Same little simple bow. And then we're just going to add that right on the top. I'm going to use another piece of that ribbon to tie those together. 
and that's going to give us some extra check tails. Tie that tightly in the middle, hold it in place, put another knot in there so it's not going anywhere. Then you can fluff it and you can trim it where you want to trim it. You shouldn't need any extra hot glue to hold anything together. It should stay there nicely for you. And I know that I want to put it right up there where the original bow was. I'm going to put it there and use this clamp to hold it down until it is dry and set up. And this is how this pumpkin looks. What do you think about that one? Cute, huh? Okay, so back to the little pumpkin that we made before. We use the stand just like on the other ones. All right, so I've got a bunch of my projects all together in this to show you how everything coordinates nicely and how much potential your own crafts can can do. And look, look at what we've used. Dollar Tree and thrifted items. Look at this. All right, using Dollar Tree items, we're going to start off with one of these little wooden boxes. Doesn't matter which one you get. I have some of these napkins, and these are the longer ones. I have some spackling and a little spatula. We're going to start off by filling in the holes in this little llama. I chose the llama because it seemed to have smaller holes, less work to have to do. So I'm just going to take the spackling with my fingers. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. This washes off easily. And I'm going to press it down in each one of those holes. You have to kind of press it and then push it to the side, otherwise it'll just go straight through. So you got to kind of do it at an angle to make it stay in there. We want to fill these in because we're going to be putting something on top. Now I've taken the flat side of my spatula, you can use a scraper or anything that you have, and just pushing it down and then going across the top. So you see what's left on the back, you just can scrape those little crumbs out and put them back into your container. Now once you get those all filled in, you'll be ready to let it dry. There you go. Be sure you put your lid back on that so it doesn't dry out. Then you'll want to put it in a place where it can dry. And while that is drying, we're going to start working on the bottom part of the box. You can use paint, you can use stain, you can leave it the same color it is, you can use furniture markers, whatever you want to use here. I'm just going to take some of my antiquing wax, I love this stuff, I'm going to add some water, that's all that is in that bottle. Mix it up to make a stain. It has virtually no smell and is very easy to clean up. I use wipes, you can use whatever kind of, you know, wipes that are okay for your skin. They seem to work really good, baby wipes, whatever you got. I'm going to dip it in there, kind of, you don't want to put too much in, you don't want it dripping necessarily, but enough to give you the coverage that you want. You can always add more to it or put another coat on there if you want to. So you're just going to go around all of the sides and see, you definitely want to protect your surface because it does make kind of a mess. This is a wax, so be sure you mix it well with your water. Okay, and then be sure you go around that rim on the top. You want this to have a nice finished look. We want everything to be nice and clean. Go along on the inside of the box. I wanted to show you this instead of completely taking it away because you can get into those corners just by rolling it and pushing it down with your finger. That way you get right down into the corner, just like I did there. And you'll have no white spots left. And you're just going to go from side to side. I like the wipes rather than using a brush. Um, it just works better. It gives me the coverage that I like and it's still sheer enough that you can see the wood grain. And I think that that's important. We're going to make something really cute with this box. Alright, so we're going to put that aside and let it dry. Once your spackling is dry, you're going to go around just the edges. You're not going to go on to the top. We're going to do something different there. So just carefully go around the edges of this box so that it matches the bottom. Or if you're painting, instead of doing this technique, you know, you can go ahead and put your paint there too. And then we're going to do also the inside. 
It's really important that that spackling is dry when you do this because if it's not and you press down, it's gonna push the spackling out the front. Then you're gonna have a mess. So I'm gonna go on top and put down some linen white chalk paint. You can use whatever type of paint you have. You can use acrylic. It really does not matter here. The reason I'm using white is because I want my watercolor napkin to really stand out. So there we go. I'm going around the edges carefully so that it doesn't get on the sides where we stained it. And I'm just making sure that there's no holes and you don't necessarily see that little llama through there. So there we go. Once it is dry, you can see the outline a little bit there, but that won't matter. I'm gonna flip it over and just trim out around the box top. You don't have to do this exactly. This is, it's so much easier to do it this way. Don't bother yourself with trying to cut something so thin perfectly. So I'm gonna use some Mod Podge here and I'm just using the mat. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit out there. You don't wanna to get too much because you don't want it to be, you don't want it to make that tissue paper of that napkin to tear. So just enough that it's gonna give it a, you know, some stickiness. And then you're gonna take just a single layer, so be sure you separate your layers and lay that on the top. I'm just lightly laying it and trying to get it centered before I press it down. You do have a little bit of room to, to move here if you need to. And then from the inside out, I'm just gonna press with my fingers. Don't be too concerned if you get little wrinkles here and there, it's okay. This is watercolor and it virtually disappears. So you can see here, I'm just trying to, to press out and away from the center and press down around my edges. Just like that. Simple. I'm not concerned that it's hanging over and that there's some pieces that, you know, are going over the top of the box. That's not a problem. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm not going crazy with this Mod Podge, but I want enough to seal it in so that this will last. You can use glossy, you can use whatever, you know, Mod Podge you want to use. If you like a glossy look, you can do that. But I think with the stain, it's going to look better if I use matte. So that's why I chose it. Okay, and now carefully with your fingers, you can just push away. I'm pushing, not pulling. I'm pushing it down and then letting it kind of slide off of there. It's not wet. You know, it's only wet where the uh, top of the box is. So this dry part will pretty easily come off there. I'm just gently rolling off some of the pieces there. And then once it dries, you can take a sanding block and just very gently brush away the little edges. And you can see how pretty that is with the, the colored sides there with the stain sides. I think it looks really nice. It's a very rustic look. And of course, you know, I'm always striving for rustic, but you do whatever you want. These videos are for inspiration. So you do what you like. Now, what a cute little gift idea, guys. I wanted to show you this. So here it is complete, all dried and ready to go. I've taken some raffia and stuck it in the bottom or whatever this is, excelsior grass, whatever this is. You can use paper shreds. Then I've taken some seasonal candies here these are just some chocolates and I'm gonna put these down in the box they're matching colors put the lid on it what a cute little gift idea so we're gonna go back in the inside of this lid now since we know what we want to do with it and I'm using a window cling you can use a sticker you can paint this do this however you want to do it you can use a piece of fabric even maybe make a special note and attach that whatever you want to do here I'm just gonna clip this off and make this work. I'm gonna use some spray adhesive just to try something different. Protect your surface here, make sure the area is ventilated. And then put down my little leaf. And by the way, the leaf has stayed here. It's, you don't have as much time to work with it with the spray adhesive as you do with a glue stick or Mod Podge. So be sure you get it where you want it because it is not coming up. So I'm just gonna rub that down and make sure it stays. Then I'm gonna put our lid back on, take a little piece of jute. I'm just kind of making sure I have the even amounts on the sides for my bow. 
you can use ribbon here you can use um, anything you want anything you want here some string you can use some Baker's twine um, whatever whatever looks good to you but this is rustic to me and I like it farmhousey rustic very cute I'm just making my bow look pretty and there we go isn't that cute who wouldn't love getting that as a little pick-me-up give me a thumbs up if you think you would enjoy something like this okay so here are our transfer stickers I found four I was so excited I hope you can find them we're gonna start off with a little bank it's got gold glitter on the outside I'm gonna open it peel out that paper it comes off really easy and then take some fingernail polish remover and take the writing right off of it really got to get a, a good amount on that tissue to get it to come off you can use a knife and scrape it off if you would rather now you just take any type of scrapbook paper that you have I happen to have some of these little pads that originally came from Target and I'm gonna tear off just a white piece that is embossed with stripes in order to get the right size I'm gonna flip backing down onto the top of it and just trace it with my pencil and cut it out it doesn't have to be perfect because when you put the back on you'll have nice crisp edges I'm gonna use my glue stick I ran out of the purple school glue sticks gotta get some more while they're still on sale and then go over that flip my paper over I'm just choosing which side I want to use and then pressing it down I'm using a wallpaper tool to just flatten it out a little I don't want to press too hard because I don't want to press the um, dimension out now I've chosen to use this grateful thankful and blessed decal for this one I'm just kind of eyeballing it I know I use that word a lot I'm just kind of getting an idea of what the center would be now you got to hold it still so that it doesn't slide around and start pressing it down now I want to let you know that it took a lot of elbow grease to get this one on this embossed paper I edited a lot of that out but I finally ended up having better luck using the back of my little spatula over there pressing it down take your time when you do it okay so now I'm gonna see there giving it a little check and it looks good I'm gonna take some of this pumpkin scented pine cones they smell delicious not like cinnamon but more like a fall scented candle I'm gonna open this little bag this did come from the Dollar Tree and I've decided I want to make this like a shaker so I'm gonna take my little pieces out there's tiny pine cones and little pieces that look like pumpkins in there and I'm just gonna put those around in the bottom I'm not just emptying the bag because I don't want all those little pine seeds to go flying all over the place they get static electricity and they make a mess in there so you see one of those little seeds fell out I don't want a bunch of that I want it to look nice neat and high-end so I'm placing those around in there yep they fit I even have a couple of extra pieces for another project I'm gonna put my back on just press it down see no need for a perfect cut there and this is what it looks like so far I did put the little slot for for where you put the money in I put that on the bottom now we're going to use the same tag that came from that little bag we're just going to cut that little orange strip off and recycle it and it's going to cover up the hole in the bottom use a little hot glue and just put that right down now you don't have to worry about it looking unfinished if anybody lifts it up and wants to shake it there you go I'm gonna do a little more to this project but I'm liking it so far what do you think okay so here is some little lace ribbon that came from Dollar Tree I tried a couple of different bows for this but finally decided on this one you're just going to measure about three inches down two and a half maybe and flip it over on itself that so that when you finish your loops you have two loops on each side so two here and two here you'll need to tie it or use some type of wire or it's so tiny I wouldn't suggest a zip tie 
I wouldn't waste it on that. Or you can use scraps of jute, that's what I do. I save all my little hangers off of previous projects and I put them in a jar. And then when I need them, I just pull them out. Plus I have a spool, a big spool of jute that I use in my projects. So now I'm just cutting this off. This is gonna be the bow and then we'll add a separate tail to it. I'm just kind of twisting it around there to make sure that everything is where I need it to be. And then you're just going to take another, I think this is about eight inches approximately, and we're gonna make a tail with that. Just gonna add some hot glue. I trimmed off the extra jute. I'm gonna make it sort of like a V there. And then glue it down. Protect your fingers. I didn't do it right then. I was in a rush, but protect your fingers. They are precious. Okay, so now I'm just cutting off that little piece that was left on the inside. Use whatever type of bow that you like. I thought this was cute for this project. This is like a rustic glam kind of project. What do you think? It's got the little lace, so it's and it's got the glitter and it's gold, so it's kind of glamorous, but it's very rustic with the, the pieces that we put on the inside. So trim your edges. You can dovetail, do whatever you want. I find with these thin ribbons, it's easier for me to just cut them at a slant and they still look finished and nice, I think. I don't want these tails to be flopping around, so I am just going to glue them down on the edge of the frame, just like this. And this is almost done. I'm gonna take one more of those little mini pine cones, put it right in the middle of my boat. You can put it to the side, you can use a leaf, you could put one of your little pumpkins there if you wanted to. Whatever you choose. Hindsight, I should have picked up some more bags of that. It's really nice to work with. Glues down nicely and it's the pine cones are in great condition. They're not shredded at all. Okay, so this is how it looks when it is complete. Okay, so here we go with the next one. This is a little metal house from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna fix her up. I'm just using my pumpkin for the last project. I'm putting it under there just to support it while I am working on it. It's a very highly reflective service. So I wanna be sure I can see what I'm doing. The camera lights will give a glare as you can see there to the right. And my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So I've chosen this Hello Autumn to go on my house, trimmed it down, I'm gonna pull the backing off. Place it down carefully where I want it to be. And then hold it down. And then this time I'm using a different tool. This is a little wooden tool. I do not know what this is. If you do, let me know I got it at Goodwill. I thought it was cute and I thought it could be used for this exact thing. So after it is put down, you can just peel this up. And I will tell you that using it on the metal seemed to work better for me than any other way work quicker it's stuck down better in other words so here's some options for you you could trim it out with a little bit of ribbon on the bottom on the top if you would like you can use some of these pumpkins just you know cut them in half stick them on there you could use some pine cones but I'm gonna put a little wreath on there and I'm gonna make my own wreath with some of this rope so I'm gonna fold it over I know how uh, how big I want it to be because I measured on the top kind of looked at it I'm gonna squeeze it together I'm gonna hold it there for a minute now. I edited that part out so you wouldn't be bored. Then I'm gonna use my cutters and just cut off the excess at a slant. So when I add some hot glue, I can roll it down on itself to make a nice circle. So I'm just adding that to the little ends before they fray using my finger protectors. These came with my Monvic glue, glue gun. Okay, so there you go. And then I'm going to find its placement on the top. And I think I want to add a little ribbon and a flower to this. Same bow, y'all. Same process. I hope I'm not boring y'all with this. But it's the same process. I wanted these videos, this particular video and these projects, to be on the simple side. And y'all, these would be great on a tear tray. If you have ones that have a lot of space between the layers, I think these would be so precious, even on a coffee coffee bar or something like that, because they're small. You know, they would look great in a china cabinet, layer it up with some dishes underneath, some white dishes, would be so pretty. 
How would you use these smaller projects? Where would you put them in your decor? Okay, gonna use a little hot glue so that I can put it down on my little house. And remember, metal gets very hot with hot glue, so just be careful. All right, and I'm gonna add my little bow to the top. Now I can put the flower down. And I think I'm gonna put it in the middle. Yep, she's right there in the middle. So there you go. Milk can. I'm going to use some of this oatmeal chalk paint and a paintbrush. And I'm going to use some Mod Podge. Plus these clings that I have been using in other projects, they have come in so handy. I'll go be, I'm going to be using these again. Okay, so to start off, we're going to need to paint the milk can. It's not very good practice to just dip into the container like this. I intended to pour it into the little plastic cup, but I just didn't do it. I got in such a rush. Sometimes when the ideas get flowing, you know, you just, you go with the flow. So I'm just going to do below this line here where it curves down. I'm just going to go all the way down onto the bottom and I'm going to complete it like this. And then I'll do one more coat of it set it aside and let it dry. Once it's dry, we're going to choose what cling we want to use and where it's going to go on this can. So I think this one is going to work. However, it's a little bit large. It goes over my trim on the top and on the bottom there where it um, is a little edging on the can. I also need to remove the lines from the little shiplap backing that is on here. So you can see the little lines there, and I'm going to take those off just by trimming them off. I'm going to leave some of the areas that look shaded. I'm just going to leave those on there, but I do want these lines off. So I'll just trim around on those spots on all of the pieces that I'm going to use. So we're going to add some other pieces too, and I'll do that as well. Just so it looks nice and neat and doesn't have anything to make it stand out too much and make it look like, hey, guess what? She put a window cling on the can. Yeah, we want it to look good. Okay, so now all those lines are gone, but you can see that the shaded little areas are still on there. So I wanna choose which side of the can I'm using, and it's gonna be this side because the other side had a little dent. Look, here's a tip when you're using something round. These little clamps that came from Dollar Tree have silicone or rubbery tips. You can press those under on each side and it will hold it still. How about that? We're gonna take a brush and our Mod Podge and put a good layer on there. Gonna try to rub it in pretty good, you know. We don't wanna leave too many really nasty, sticky areas, but we wanna put enough on there where that cling is gonna stay. So I'm just kind of holding it in place and then pressing it outward from the inside outward to get the little bubbles and air bubbles a chance to run from me. So that's what I'm doing there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go around, add some more. Like that. And go over the top of the pumpkin too because we want it to all be in this matte finish to make it look like it was painted on the can rather than stuck on the can later. It makes a difference between your projects whether or not they look high end. You want it to look like it belongs on here. So overlapping a little bit. Now I'm gonna choose my leaves. I'm gonna put another one of those on this side. Same process, holding it down, holding it in place so it doesn't slip around. There we go. Then you go ahead and put some more of it all the way across the top. Because this is matte and those clings are shiny, this will look matte and the paint underneath will look matte. It will all have the exact same finish. Just going to add some more of those leaves on the back. So is this a maple leaf? Do you think this is a maple leaf? Okay, so I'm going to press this one down here. You can use any clings that you have. These came from Walmart last year. Okay, so after we've got one coat on, this is what it looks like, but you can still see that it's reflective, so it's still kind of shiny. 
So I'll go ahead and put a second layer and let it dry and then this is how it looks. Much, much better. All right, we're gonna take some of this, they call it eucalyptus. You can call it boxwood, you can call it whatever you would like. But I like it because it is green and kind of orangey. So it looks nice to me. I'm gonna take these off. You can see they're nice and full for, for Dollar Tree. And then this is a thrifted flower and it is beautiful. I got a bunch of these and some other ones that are just gorgeous. The color is so gorgeous. It's kind of muted and faded and looks like it's at the end of the season. So it's just perfect. Now I'm gonna show you this view and I'm going to arrange this from the top. I got a comment before that they that somebody said it wasn't helpful to do it this way, but I I think that that is not correct. I think that it is, you can learn something from it from this way. You see exactly what I'm doing from the top. This is how I arrange it from above. So I want you to see what I see. Take that pick, flare it out, put it right in the bottom of the can. I think that's quite clear. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this pick. Spread it out, put it straight into the can. Move it around a little bit because we wanna make some space for the flower, which, bam, plop it down right in the middle. There you go. So that's simple. This is what it looks like so far. At some point, I may get a second camera so that I can do more angles and different angles, but for now, this I'm doing the best that I can, and I hope that that is, is good for y'all and that it's okay for y'all, that you can still follow my instruction and you can see what I'm doing. Because I really, this channel should be about you, and I want it to be for you to learn. I want to share with you, so I want to do what's best for you. Now all I'm doing is adding some extra leaves that I got that were thrifted and these I believe came originally from Hobby Lobby and I'm just tucking those in there. Just um, here and there, wherever I feel like they need to be, but you can see what I'm doing. Seem pretty clear? We didn't use foam or anything and it's only one flower so it's a rather simple arrangement. I think it's gorgeous. This one will not be taken apart or sold. This one will remain in my house because I am going to be using this little beauty. I love it. Now we're gonna do a cottage basket wreath. I'll so if you're still here, yay. So happy you stayed because I got a good one for you. I'm gonna use a thrifted basket. I'm gonna use a combination of thrifted and some recycled and some Dollar Tree greenery for this project. Plus I'm going to use this napkin and it's just a plaid fall colored napkin that I got from the thrift store as well. This beautiful fuzzy sunflower that probably came from Michael's originally. And these really pretty grasses. Okay so I want to make a little pocket down here. The pocket is actually not going to hold the weight of anything. It's just going to appear as though it's holding the weight. See what I'm saying? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna fold that square into a triangle and then start putting a little glue down there so that it stays together when we start gluing it on the pumpkin. On the pumpkin, listen to me. Have I got pumpkin on the brain or what? The basket, I mean the basket. We're gonna lay it down, make sure that it goes down past the edges. I'm gonna use my clamps, the ones that we had before, that I showed you before to get placement on the sides so that when we flip it over, I'll know where I want it glued. I'm gonna use my glue gun, still on my cool temperature, but you can use hot, whatever you wanna use, and start placing that down. You don't wanna to pull too tight because you don't wanna distort the shape of your basket. Now, this is not a flat basket. It actually has a little bit of depth, probably about three inches of depth. It just looks flat if that makes any sense. You'll see when you start putting the flowers in and I flip it over, you'll see what I mean. Now, however you have to do this, do it. As long as it's glued down, if you wanna cut off your edges, you can certainly cut them off or you can leave it in place like this so when you take it off, you can use it for another project. That's what I intend to do, so that's why I'm doing it this way. I'll still have pieces of fabric that I can use.
just kind of making some gathers where it will lay flat once, you know, when I get ready to hang it on the wall, I don't want anything to be in the way, so I'm just kind of neatly putting some gathers in there so it'll stay in place. Simple, simple. Probably did not need to show you all that, but you get the point. So now we have a pocket. We're gonna start putting in our grasses first. Grass first because it's in the back, it's the tallest one. So that's what I wanna go in the back. It's not secured down yet. We're gonna take some floral wire and wire it to the basket or zip ties or you can use pipe cleaners. Zip ties is what I'm using. You can get a big package of these at Dollar Tree and a variety of colors. I have black and I have white. So I, this has, this weave is kind of an open weave. So I can actually place this down and secure it to the back quite nicely. I'll get everything secured and at the end of the project, I'll go back and clip off all of the extra. Now what I'm doing is kind of digging down to the bottom layers so that you don't see these on the top and just going over the bottom layers, the bottom bulk of it, and then securing them on the back. Leave a little bit of slack in there for adding more flowers to it, just a little. You can always tighten it up later when you need to. You're almost making a form to attach other things to. You want it to be sturdy. Okay, so here we go, adding this big, beautiful, single sunflower. I'm just pushing that down in there, right behind where that one piece of grass is. You can see the bottom of the stems behind the grass. Then I'm just going to loop one of those ties across the bottom of that stem. And then in the back, I'm going to tighten it up so that it doesn't fall out. I have it intentionally slanted to the side. Everything doesn't have to grow straight up. It doesn't have to be arranged straight up. Now, if you happen to have a pick that is large, but you don't have a whole bunch of individual picks, just cut it apart. Simple enough. If it's scissors, if it's plastic, you can use scissors. If it has wire in it, just use your wire cutters and trim it off. And then we're gonna start adding these pieces in here or there. This is my rustic cottage core basket wreath that I adore. I love it. You can see here I'm trying to wiggle it down a little bit so that it gets into one of those other zip ties and then pull it down. It's not going to go anywhere. This piece will not be outside. This is not an outdoor wreath. Um, we have a lot of humidity here in southern Alabama where I live and I have a feeling it would be mildewed or moldy. My white fabric would be turned all shades of yuck. So this is going to be in the house. I have varying heights and I have them in various places all over. And because we have those pieces of grass secured in there, now we can just place our other things around where the grasses are attached and everything should stay in place. Next, we're gonna move on to these beautiful little flowers that I think I got at Dollar Tree. If I didn't, you can definitely get some that are similar to this at Dollar Tree because I've seen them there before. You can see my little bull nose pliers or side cutters, whatever you wanna call those. That's what I use to cut everything. They're really strong and good and durable. So I'm gonna start adding in these now. These are in little clusters and I think they're just gorgeous. They're very wild looking to me. They look like something I would see growing on the side of the road. I just love it. Again, think about that. Think about nature as your inspiration. You know, if you're walking down the road in the country, what do you see? What's growing in the ditch line next to you? What do you see that's just makes you stop and look at it? You know, makes you stop and pick a flower. Those are the things that bring us comfort that we really love, and those are the things that we need to surround ourselves with. Those are the things that bring us true joy. So that's what I try to do with my decor. And I want beautiful things in my home. I don't want to spend a lot of money. I know I don't have to spend a lot of money. And I want you to learn that you can do the same thing. Okay, now for these little berry picks. I'm just gonna add those here and there. 
No rhyme or reason. Just like with the flowers, really no rhyme or reason. We're doing it like Mother Nature. We're doing it like God intended. Just here and there, wherever it can find the sun, that's where we're putting it. Nice. Now, I know y'all have Dollar Tree bags. Y'all can use these for stuffing. Recycle, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just kind of rolling these up, folding them, flattening them out, and pressing these down to make the to form the bottom. Then I'm going to take some of this Excelsior grass and stuff this all on the top. You can also use those hula skirts from the summertime from Dollar Tree. They'll work good here too. So they're just crumpled up and they just look like straw and weeds that are starting to die back. I think it's perfect for this. You can use moss if you want, but I really like the color of this with the rest of it. I think it's so pretty. Now we need one more thing in here. We need some vegetation. We need some gourd or pumpkin in here. So I'm just trying it out with a little pumpkin, which would go great. You could just put a dowel in it and poke it in there. Or my gourd that I got from the thrift store already had a pick in it. So there we go. I'm just going to stick that down in there, and I like it. I think it looks good. What do you think? Be sure that you look at it from all angles, fluff it around, bend stuff where it needs to be bent, press stuff back, move it if it needs to be moved. Do what looks good to you. Then I'm just going to use a piece of jute cord on the back, right in the center, to make a little loop knot so that we can hang it up. Do you like the basket wreath or do you like the can, the milk can? Thank you so much to all my subscribers who've been with me from the start and welcome to all of you who are new here. I'm so glad to see you. I have lots of fall Part inspiration coming your way. We're going to use this bottle cap to make a very cute piece of fall decor. I'm going to use my little spray bottle with water and some scissors. I'm going to grab my paper towels and I'm following my directions. I'm going to add some water. This is room temperature water. I'm going to put it in this pan and place my decal down in the water. It's still on the paper backing and that's how you want it. You just place it down in there and you don't, it's going to roll up when you put it in the water. You don't have to stretch it out. I'm going to do three times the speed to show you that it will uncurl on its own. And when it does, when you get ready to take it out of the water you'll know that it's ready because it begins to slip off the paper when you touch it and you can see when I pull it out what I'm doing testing to see if it's ready and see how it slides on the backing so it's perfect now you need to work with a wet surface so I'm just putting some of that sprinkled water down rubbing it on then you're gonna grab it between your thumb and your fingers start to slide it a little bit hold it in place which is what I'm doing and you're going to carefully pull the paper from underneath it. Oh, it came out perfectly. Yes. Now there are bubbles and water under there and that is normal and you will see that it does come out. So I'm just pressing the wrinkles away like that with my fingers. I'm going to unfold the little edge that I curled under. I was unsure at first of how strong that layer was going to be, but I was able to move it around quite a bit, so I was impressed by that. I didn't tear it or pull anything loose. So holding it in place, I'm just using the same technique I would if I was doing um, like a decoupage or if I was doing a glue stick and putting down something. Holding it and then wiping away from the center so that the water will push outward, and then I'm kind of patting it down. All right, I'm going to give that a chance to dry, and then we're going to embellish the sign. So far, so good. You can choose whatever type of ribbons you want to use, or maybe some jute, maybe some raffia, something like that. You could just use twine if you wanted, but I want to do a little messy bow, so I'm just going to be cutting some six-inch pieces three times of those ribbons that you can see there I chose. I'm going to use some of this Excelsior or Raffia or whatever you want to call this. Looks like hay to me. I'm going to pull it in half, put some on the bottom, and just start making X's across my stack. We're just stacking these up, putting 
different patterns and colors together. But these all coordinate nicely with the sign, so these are the ones I chose. None of these have wire. It is not important for this. I'm going to take the other half of that bundle that I separated, put it on the top so it, all the ribbon is sandwiched in between these two layers of rustic looking, looks like hay. I'm going to pinch it in the middle, pull my piece of jute around, and then try to get it in the center and tie it down tightly. I'm going to put a knot in here because I don't want it to come loose and it's a very bulky type of bow so it needs to be secured nicely. I'm going to just hold the ends and then trim up all the excess that's hanging off as you can see me doing there and then just begin to fluff it out. If you have not subscribed to my channel we would love to have you here. I have a big YouTube family. It's growing every day and I'm so appreciative. And I love doing budget-friendly DIYs and rustic type projects. So just tie that onto the strap and there you go. What do you think about that? So far so good. I'm really liking this product so far. And this is not a paid video. I'm not getting paid. They did send me the, pro the products to try though. Greenery here. So, so These far so good. These are thrifted pieces of greenery. I have a thrifted little mini wreath down there. These are some greenery pieces that are on a garland really really pretty i'm going to pick off the cream colored and you'll see below i have three of those crackled glass or ceramic pumpkins from the dollar tree i'm going to start by figuring out my setup now i know i'm going to need some foam and in order to hold that in i'm going to cut a piece of scrap paper make a little circle there for the bottom i'm just going to hot glue it down on this wreath so that we can press our picks into a piece of styrofoam instead of gluing it all together. It makes the items more versatile so you can change things up. Now I'm going to take a scrap of styrofoam. So easy. Take this out of some boxes from something you've gotten in the mail. Then I'm going to add some hot glue. You're going to need Gorilla Glue or some E6000 for this project because it is a shiny glass. Be sure also that you use some alcohol to wipe down all your pumpkins so that that glue gets some good grip. Now you're going to pick whatever type of matching, coordinating, whatever makes your little heart happy greenery. Fall greenery, preferably. And I'm going to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to use these little pieces, and you can see here I am doing four corners. So I've got kind of a square shape, and then I'm just going to fill in in between. This is very easy. I'm tucking this in between the wreath form and the pumpkin, and it goes right into the styrofoam. If you don't have styrofoam, you could always put your picks right into your wreath. Now I'm going to start adding these little pieces. They look, I don't know, like little seed pods maybe. Not really sure what you would call them. And I'm gonna do those in a square as well. I like the look of this. And so far we've got our orange and our cream and we will be, be bringing in some bluish green when we put the eucalyptus in there. Okay, so far so good. First pumpkin down, first layer down. Now I've decided that I want my orange to go in the middle, so I'm just going to add a good bit of glue and conveniently enough there's a hole in the bottom, so you're just going to go at an angle, slide that straight on there, make sure that it's level and I was standing above it looking down, hold it until it is dry and secure. Then we're going to take the last pumpkin, same thing, going to put a good bit of glue on here, we don't want anything to topple over and break and then put it on a slant there and then put it straight down. You don't want to break anything, so just be gentle with this. I was afraid because it has a crackle finish that it may be a little more fragile than your normal ceramic or glass pumpkin, so just something to keep in mind. Be careful. Okay, so now I've got this beautiful bluish green eucalyptus that I have cut into pieces, and I'm gonna start tucking those in that bottom layer of greenery. Then we'll move up a little bit between the pumpkins in a minute. I'm just kind of looking to see 
what I like here. I don't have a particular pattern for this, but I do like to try to space them out kind of evenly so that I get a good distribution of all the colors all the way around. So from all angles, you could actually put this in the center of your table if you wanted to or on your bar because it looks nice in all directions. Just be sure that you rotate your piece and that things are looking like you want it to look. So I'm laying some pieces flat and some at an angle, putting some on top and some underneath and some in between. These little picks were also thrifted. I don't know if I mentioned that. So now I'm between the top and the second pumpkin and I am just adding on some little leaves there. I didn't use any of the orange and yellow between these because I have all that color, the cream, and the orange in the top two pumpkins, so I just wanted to add the eucalyptus between these layers. I'm just using a pick to help me press it in between the layers so that I don't put too much stress on it by trying to put my finger in there to hold it still. Okay, now I'm going to add a couple of pieces on the top and a little, little more in between. You can use a dowel rod or a pen or a pencil, piece of wire, whatever you have to kind of tuck those things in there. And that's what I've done. I want to let them have a little bit of movement. So I'm only putting the glue on one end so that the tips of the leaves, you know, kind of stand out. And this is what we have. Then I'll look at it, see if you want to add anything else. And at this point, you can certainly do that. Give me a thumbs up if you like. Project number two is going to be our home swag. Now this is a Dollar Tree sign. They have a variety of gorgeous signs. Pick whichever ones that you want. And then we're gonna have some pieces that go with this that are gonna coordinate with these colors. So that bluish green, aqua turquoise, teal, whatever color you wanna call it, creams, and some orange, white. I'm gonna set this off. And of course, you know, I'll have my typical brown burlap in there as well. Now, to kind of give this little sign a glow up, you're going to want to take some dark brown paint or some dark gray, something like that, and go down these lines. As you can see here, where they made this project, you can it kind of looks papery and kind of cheapy because you can see little white flecks. If you go down your centers like this with this, a darker colored paint, it really makes it look higher end. In my opinion, it really makes a difference. And I'll show you when I'm done with this, one side, the difference between the two sides and the look of it. You can already see there on that O what a difference that makes. So we're just rubbing a little bit on. I have a, like a fine tip marker. I'm just gonna put that in there and then rub it back off. And every bit of the paint that needs to stay is going to stay right where we put it. So you see the difference here? Look at the difference in the two sides. That makes a big difference. You could also, I guess, use a Sharpie or some type of a marker if you've got something that's narrow and long enough to fit into that crack. Just so easy. And it really does make a big difference in the appearance of this little sign. But you do this or leave it out whichever way you prefer to do it. And you know, maybe some of the signs are in better shape than mine was. Okay, feel free to distress your edges if you need to. Now, this is a wreath, a rectangular wreath or swag type form. It's wire and it has little, I guess, tinsel type branches or holders on it. It was $5.99. I got it from the thrift store, so I'm not sure where it originally came from, but you can get yours at any craft store. Or if you don't want to use this type of form, you can use pipe cleaners and hot glue them right to the back of your sign. Just not even have that big form back there. This is just going to make it a little more sturdy. And since I had it, I wanted to take the opportunity to try it out. Now I've just flooded over the wire there with some hot glue. And I'm actually using my cold temperature um, glue with this so I don't burn myself. And then I'm going to take some, I think this is 3M tape, 
and put that right over the top. That is really going to make a good strong hold so that this swag doesn't go anywhere. Nothing's going to fall apart, hopefully. Ideally, I suppose I should say. And we're going to do that on every one of those little crossbars there. Be sure to follow me on my social media. I'd love to get to know you better. Okay, so now we're going to start layer on, layering on our prettiness. This is some 24 inch deco mesh. This is one piece that I found at the thrift store. Wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it when I found it, but I was so excited that there's no glitter in it and no metallic in it. I had to have it for something. It turned out perfect for this project. I'm just going to start it off by tucking it in the back and wrapping it around tightly so that it doesn't come apart whenever I am tugging on it to make the little poofs. So now we're going to go down about 12 inches. You can see we're going down 12 inches. Walk in your fingers towards the middle. Let your sides go under. It's going to make a better little poof. And then we're going to go up to the very next little grabbers there. That little section and we're going to press it into the frame and then twist it tightly. Okay, so again, we're going to go down about 12 inches. We're going to walk it toward each other with our ends under, so the poof's in the middle. Just like that. Press it into that section tightly, and then give it a twist. And we're going to continue the same process all the way up. We're going to do the same thing across the top. I'm going to gather it up here. I'm having a little trouble here. I don't know what the problem was. There we go. Grabbing it up, bending it over the top. And then we're going to continue all the way back down the side. Feel free to measure these to get exact measurements if you would like. I didn't need to do it that way. I didn't feel the need. So I just guesstimated. Continue all the way around and look at that. I had just enough to go all the way around. Now I'm just going to pull my little poofs out a little bit, press the first little top edge underneath if it's coming out. That way my sign is going to be, a, you know, you can really be able to see that sign in the middle. Now this is some five inch burlap. There's no wire or anything in here. I'm just going to use this to go on the outside. I'm going to tuck it under. You can see how I tucked it under that deco mesh. And the same little process, kind of scrunching it up in the middle and then giving it a twist to hold it in place. We're going to do this again. About the same thing. It's going to be about the same measurement, about 12 inches. Go up. It's just going to go like a frame on the outside of the deco mesh. So you can see how this is looking. Pushing it together in the middle and then twisting it down. Now, if you don't want to twist it tightly to begin with to make sure that your measurements are about the same, you don't have to twist it in completely tightly and you can certainly untwist it and go back and make adjustments if you need to. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the top like a little hoodie. You can tell I have kids, right? Yeah. Continuing on around until we're back in our original starting place. You can tuck the edge to the back and cut it off. See there? Okay, so now I've got some thrifted this is like a linen and glittery orange plus a blue Dollar Tree ribbon. We are going to be cutting these down in 10 inch pieces. And you want to have enough of each ribbon to go in each one of those ties on your swag. So that's what you're going to see me do here. I'm just going to start cutting that. And I'm just measuring it against the one before it. Makes it a little easier. Okay. 
Okay, that's me counting to see, to make sure I have enough. Then we're going to dovetail the ends to make them nice and neat. I hope you guys are doing some of these crafts that I've been showing you. I hope that you have been trying some of these and that you are at least getting some inspiration from all of the things that I have been showing you. Lots more to come, so be on the lookout. Remember, three videos a week, unless the internet says absolutely not. Okay, so I'm going to overlap. I'm going to make an X. going to open up one of those ties, whatever you want to call those. going to twist them in tightly in each of those sections. I'm going to use my fingers to curl those out. Now it's an X. Just make your adjustments however you like. The next one we're going to put in the opposite direction. We're still going to keep the green on top, but we're going to cross it over the other direction. I'm going to open that up, question myself for a moment, and then wrap it down. I'm putting these in definitely tighter because I know this is the last thing I'm going to wrap in here. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down as much as they need to be before they are tucked away. Continue on the process, alternating the direction of your X's all the way around. Y'all, it is so hot here in southern Alabama. I am ready, ready, ready for some fall breezes, desperately. It's just humid and Ugh. I'll stay in the basement and craft. That's what I'll do until it gets cool outside. How does that sound? Good? Good. Okay. So here we go. We only have two left on the bottom. And you can see I'm kind of fluffing them out as I go along. I'm going to place this one down. And twist it in tight. That's some good Dollar Tree ribbon right there. It really holds its form. All right, so I'm concerned about the top of here. So I'm going to cut off that cord that you would usually use as a hanger. And I'm going to cut a 6 inch and a 5 inch piece of this pretty orange and tan ribbon. I am going to dovetail each one of them. One will be longer than the other, and we're going to make a little bow tie bow. We're going to put the longer piece in the back, the shorter on the front. We're going to pinch it together, and then it's going to be so cute. Look at that. Then you're going to just use whatever type of jute you want. You can use your original hanger that you just had on top of that sign to tie off your bow. I'm going to tie a double knot so nothing comes loose. Trim it up, and look how cute that is. That is super cute. A little hot glue, and we'll put it in its new home, right at the top on the pumpkin stem. And this is how it looks. Not bad. Not bad at all. So now is the time that we took back all of those little pieces of greenery or little pieces of the, I don't even know what to call those things. We're just going to call them tinsel because that's what it looks like, a Christmas tree branch. Tuck them all to the back. Once they are hidden, we're going to take some of this greenery. Now, get yours from the Dollar Tree if you'd like. You can get them anywhere you want. This happens to be something that I thrifted, so I got it very inexpensive. It did come originally from Walmart. It's a $2 clearance item according to the tag that I found on it. I'm going to layer up the pieces of the leaves that I want to use. Some are going to be single, some are going to be doubled. And with a little hot glue, we're going to tuck them in and around those little ribbon sections. If you have some mini pine cones, if you have some berries, if you have some of those little ball ornaments, 
you could use those. You can add anything you like on your sign to make it your own. That's what we do here. We make it our own, right? I'll make mine the way I like it, and you make yours the way you like it. But feel free to make yours like mine if that's what you like. So you're going to have leaves in all of those sections. And just kind of look and see what looks good. They don't all have to go in the same direction. Totally up to you. I'm going to take a little bit of floral wire, feed it through the deco mesh, twist it around, and we're going to have a little, make a little hanger for it. And there you go. I would love to know what you think about this. Now, I have to say, I'm stepping outside of the box here. For me, I like the traditional colors for fall. So adding in this aqua, turquoise, teal, blue, whatever you want to call this, it's a little different for me but I think that they look really good together I think that the colors are very complementary I love how that bluish green looks with the orange I think it looks really nice together do you like this do you like the color combination and I would love to know are you going to try any of these if so which one will you be trying and did you find anything inspirational in this video because if you did I would love a thumbs up I would love to hear in the comments what you think thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon bye